They'll go outside not like a Walmart many. or any kind of like busy area, and they'll have their kids, and they'll have like you know there will be usually it's like two kids, the wife, and then sometimes the husband will be there, and then you'll see another car pull up. Always a nice looking car, always like a Lexus or a good SUV or something that's not under twenty thousand mm-hmm. dollars. You always see that, and they just pull off. And it's like you've been there for like you've been there all day. That's all they do all day. You never see them. I've seen. I've literally watched these kids grow up over the years. <laughs> of them just chilling. Like you would think by now that you would have you know something, right? Or maybe you come up with some sort of plan because it's not like. Most cities have some sort of programs to help families oh, out, no, yeah, get on sure. their feet. I mean, I've experienced that through other people or close yeah, friends yeah, or individuals. Sure. And they have so, places like the the church or food drives where yeah. they get food from. That they're not starving. Exactly. There's no such thing as a starving bum in well-off cities, 100%. And it's, it, it's crazy because when you give them money for uh, whatever reason, they're going to use it for drugs. They're going to use it for alcohol. They're going to use it for anything for, else other than what they're saying they're going to use for it for. For food and stuff. Like and it's not that, all the know? time always the case because I've mm. seen like mentally uh, challenged individuals that are of just course, off yeah. on their luck. But it's usually not the ones that you're seeing on the corners like that. Right. Typically. I do, I do wish that we kind of had more programs for that mm-hmm. uh, that like actually like focused so uh, my my philosophy on this one i guess i can do two so the reason why i don't give bums money is because when i was like 16 i had a revelation i used to feel bad you know i'm a 16 year old kid i'm seeing people homeless mm. but i'm like if i gave you a dollar what's stopping me from giving everyone a dollar if i'm giving everyone a dollar i'm gonna be broke on the street asking for money with you right so that's one thing why i don't do it but another thing too is that i really do wish that like we had more programs because if you if you give a man a fish you feed him for a day if you teach him how to fish you give him food for life. Mm-hmm. And unfortunately, it's a lot of people, especially like, you know, by the time, but when we were in K Town on Monday, um, you, saw, you see people in cardboard boxes and stuff like that. If you really look at those people, some of those people don't have legs. Mm-hmm. Some of those people don't have arms. Yeah. Some people don't have arms and legs. There's actually people that need help, help, like genuine help. But they either don't want the help or like, just, they don't know how to because they, like I said, they have some sort of mental issue. They mm-hmm. could be veterans. They could be just whatever the situation is. And it's like you know we have this thing where it's like you know free will and we can't take away people's freedoms and stuff like that. But it's like you know I I wish there was like I don't know the solution, but I wish there was a solution that we could find where we're not mm-hmm. taking away people like just because like you know the problem with certain things about taking away people's freedom is that where's the limit because then people exactly. start abusing it because yes. the moment we start just grabbing bums throwing them into like, a, mm. you know then that's where the euthanization comes and the people start purging them and mm-hmm. I don't know where they're going I, like people don't like to talk about the slippery slope mm-hmm. uh, fallacy but that honestly that's something that's been ingrained in my head right. because we've seen it all through history it always starts like I mean hell I talk about it all the time World War Two three. or well, we're three, but we're rule two. Three, but uh, all the time, it always that's what that's how they do it. They they you just go inch by inch. They they go a little too far, and just to see what your limits are with anything. Like so, let's say for example, that they talk about um, okay, we need to come up with a plan for the homeless people. We're going to start these programs. Everyone's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're gonna the programs are gonna be about like ten million. For these programs, everyone's like, "Oh, that's a lot of money from out of our taxes, right?" Like, "Oh, well, okay, we won't do that. We're not going to raise your taxes that much. We'll do like five million. Mm-hmm. Their whole plan was just to do a five million in the first place, right. but they wanted to okay. see how much they do, or but or they, their whole plan is to do like two million. But they're like, "Okay, we managed to get it to five million, so we have more than what they expected us to have, or we expected to have." So, like, okay, now we have the program for five million. Well. For some reason, these programs aren't really working because a lot of the homeless people, they're, they're actually more comfortable being homeless. Not right. all of them, but or the ones that have mental issues, they don't, they're not really trusting of people. Of so they don't want to just jump into these programs because maybe they've lived a hard life and they're, they, they don't trust a helping hand for whatever mm-hmm. reason. So it's harder for us. Like, okay, so we need to kind of force these situations. How do we force them? Well, we, I mean, we have those individual rights. So we have to kind of abuse that somehow. Like, how do we do that without people freaking out? Which Let's they, just do it. They make the laws harder. Mm-hmm. So they make like so they do things like I don't know if you see probably images where they make living conditions harder and yep. make the laws harder. So they make anti-homeless mm-hmm. like under bridges where it's like spiky or anti-homeless benches where mm-hmm. it's like cut off and like small and that's that, yeah that's another thing they started off really s- slow with. They just put it here and there. People complained. They stopped doing it. 
then they started doing more and more and now you barely hear anybody complaining about it anymore it's just a way of life it's just a part of our architecture now it's just like oh why why is this usually usually you just have a bench that's just flat no bars in the middle like why is everything so sp- like closed in why can't i sit like why can't a normal person sit in this bench yeah. it's not because they're trying to keep people from sitting it's because they don't want people to lay down there and sleep so homeless people can't sleep there that's why but we don't it's been lost we don't think about that stuff and it like is it good we yeah have to go about our days what they raise the rent every two minutes the mm-hmm. a bag of chips is not even two dollars anymore it's 250 now yeah divert um, everybody's attention to other things yo, that, I and have funny all the time experience. uh uh dude <laughs> i was in the bodega uh like two or three days ago and a dude get out uh, buying a honey bun and he put it on the counter and gave the dude a dollar. He's sitting there waiting. And the dude was like, shit, I forgot they raised the price of these dollars. I'm, waiting for, I'm sitting here waiting for my change. I forgot tons of change. He walked, and he walked out the store and the whole oh, store man. was dying. Bro, honey buns is not even 50 cents no more. Times have changed. So, yeah, it's literally like we have our own issues to focus on. And then they're slowly making other things that like are beyond our control yeah where we're not paying attention they're secretly doing other stuff they and then those things hurt us because you know i'm from the south bronx like Mm. we're literally in the south bronx right now i'm low income like the lowest of income i don't have that much stuff so you know there are people in more less fortunate situations than me who might be getting evicted tonight Mm -hmm. and where do they have to go they have to go to the shelters Mm -hmm. and those programs are probably getting even harder and stuff like that. I mean, so it's like, yeah. you know, it's, it's, it, it, you may think it doesn't affect you, but like, you know, I'm a, I'm, I work in like a nice area. I work with like rich white people and stuff like that. Like I said, they don't know my situation. Mm-hmm. So if I'm working in those areas and stuff like that, who would say the person right next to me isn't, you know, in that situation where they're about to get evicted. So yeah. It doesn't matter about your location. It's not like I'm working at McDonald's and I'm like, you know, in the trap house or whatever. So it's like, you know, you may have it all right now, but you could lose it in tomorrow and then yep. you'll be right there. And then you're like, now the homeless policy. Now nah, suddenly it's you. my problem. Yeah. yeah. So wouldn't you so, like, yeah, it's like it's the way to look at it is like, would if you were in, if you suddenly lost everything, even if you're in a well-off situation, let's say you're making a hundred K a month or whatever. And you're just like in one of the best situations ever, but suddenly you just lost everything. Wouldn't you want some sort of, Safety net. safety net to help you out right like have something to where no one gets to zero because zero it's almost impossible to get and not even just for yourself but even for, for other anybody people, but that's but how you, society should run but nobody's nobody's kind right, right. you have to look at it in a, they have, you have to look at it in a perspective of them being selfish because at the end of the day people mostly care about them and their families right. if not just them that's so like, like, let's say like you wouldn't you want something to be there for you if anything goes wrong it's like an insurance but for everybody, right. that everybody contributes to. So if anything happens, you're good. So that's what food stamps supposed to be. That's what social security is supposed to be technically in some sort of regard, right? Like you get to an old age where you can't work and you have to have food. You have to provide for yourself. And we're it's more of a country of individual people. We're not, we're not like like how a lot of other countries will have like their, their elderly in their home still. No, no, everyone's individual. Mm-hmm. Everyone, like, lives on their own. They do their own thing. Right. So, like, how would they provide for themselves at an old age? Okay, so we have this social safety net or social security to help out that transition of being too old to work and death and still be able to live comfortably. Unfortunately, that's being torn apart. Food stamps are mm-hmm. definitely being torn apart. But a lot of this is because people are taking advantage of it. Mm-hmm. So the system is broken entirely because of people taking advantage and people not trying to fix what can be fixed to make things better. Right. Like government's completely destroying it all. And yeah. people are too. So it's like people want to blame the government. The government wants to blame the people, but we're all in this together because the government is the people in the first place. So it's like, where do we start to actually fix the problems? But that discussion can't be made because they don't care. They want to get rid of those, pro- those programs anyway. And that's the, because I'm, if there's no safety that, net, think, you don't have to worry um, about like any of those sorry, people. No, you're good. You're so, nerd time, right? Because mm-hmm. you know you bring in the you bring in the logic and bring in the nerd thing to like relate it to the people. Remember, you watched the Batman movie with um with Robert Pattinson? 
Yeah. Okay. So remember how they had I forget what the name is. Um, someone in the comments will probably think, but it was the, oh remember it was the renewal program. Mm. So remember they had the renewal program where it was essentially like a, a trust fund that was supposed to go to the orphans, mm. and basically I I don't know because politicians don't get like the president doesn't he makes a paycheck but he doesn't make money like the same way we do mm -hmm. so like the way politicians that steal money is, is basically they take these government assistance programs and they skim off the top of excess and they make the taxes go up in some shape or form mm -hmm. so that's basically what they're doing with all the government assistance is yeah. like they have these they create these programs and then they essentially have like a, a tax um Thing that they like skim off the top mm -hmm. and that's basically how all of these like corrupt politicians are making their money and stuff like that I was like really I only found out that's like possible through like Batman because it's like yeah. you would think oh they're, they're creating a new program but then where's all the funding and all the money and stuff yeah, like that they don't actually do, they like say that. like they'll say like oh yeah this program is gonna be uh, we need fifty thousand dollars for this program when in reality they only need ten thousand dollars and that well, extra, extra 40, 40 goes, goes to them right and they use it for their pockets mm -hmm. it's like it's smart but it's like fuck you, right? <laughs> like, I, like and it happens so often. That's why they don't really like doing audits. I mean, when was it? What uh, was it? The Pentagon? Yeah, they just did an audit on the Pentagon not too long ago, and it's like, how do you lose? How much money was that? A couple billion that that was not accounted I don't for. Keep up with that stuff at all. And everyone's <laughs> like, what? Hey, where'd all that money go? Like maybe they, it was accounted for for a second audit or whatever. But every audit in the last couple of years, they've failed. And it's like when we just all we're too distracted again going back to distraction we're too distracted by everything that's going on in our daily lives mm -hmm. which is reasonable right we're just so we, oh we have to deal with our daily like lives the aliens oh my god that's a yeah good nobody segue. gives a shit i did not care i don't about care i still don't care. i don't care bro okay, so so if uh, unless iguodala is gonna save the planet when the martians got the death beam pointed at earth and he needs to make that final mm -hmm. shot i don't care i would no. love to see that anything else i don't care because it's like like, okay, what am I going to do? What am I going to become one of the uh, Starship Troopers and just start? I'm exactly. doing my part. I'm helping. Fuck you know what I'm, I'm not, I can't do anything. Like, if they, they came to take over the planet right now, I'm, I'm I, bro, I, I got to go pay There's some bills, man. Yeah, like, man, the rent still do. Like, it's, like, it the water still bills still do. Like, imagine I, telling your landlord that, like, oh, listen, I love to, but you didn't hear about the aliens. Did you not see that know, UFO like, last night? He's like, like, like fuck what does that have to do with you to come into work? Thank you. So you right. better hope the UFO got space for you, because that's where you're going to have to be living. <laughs> that's that's the excuse. Done, you know what I'm saying? So it's just like you're focusing way too much on the wrong things, because it's like, it's always a distraction now. Sometimes the boomers be going crazy. Like, remember when everyone was standing there, broom up straight or whatever? They're like, oh, the, the government's distracting you from something going on. Yeah. It's like we just... can focus on two things at once. It's when the government themselves are trying to throw stuff at us that is mm -hmm. like, hey, wait a second. Are you are you invading Iran again? You yeah. Know, is like... there something going on in Ukraine? <laughs> Like, yo, you crazy though, bro. Because it's like, that's where we're like, oh, where's all the money going? Like, oh, we're, we're you know, putting in space to the combat the aliens or something like the that. Fact, the fact that all this money went to Ukraine. Trillions, right? Like 2.3 trillion or But we like had that? that thing, was it called Mao? That then he gave only $700 to each household. Not individual, right? Was it household or individual? Bro, you're, I have to keep up with none of that stuff. So wait, wait bring it down. For Only seven hundred dollars. I, I so can't. Bring, explain so to me. essentially, so after the fire that happened in uh, Maui, I can I can never pronounce it. Oh, um, okay, okay. Too much. I, 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 you said Mao, like Mao Zedong. Too much. No, no. Maui. Maui. In, Maui. In Hawaii. So okay. after what after happened? After the wildfire. The, yeah. Okay. So he only gave seven hundred dollars to them. I can't remember if it's per household or per individual, but regardless of whichever one it is, that's not enough. Right, okay. That There needs to be a lot more done. However, you want to give how many trillions to the war that we're supposedly not in? We're not in, so rather our own country. And the excuse is, well, if we don't, pro if we don't provide, then, the, then there's actually going to be a war with uh, like the countries that we're like involved with and then then we have to go into the war so that's like this is a kind of like a, a way of preventing that by putting more money into it. like i understand that point 
However, you have no support from any of the United States citizens at this point because of all the bullshit that's going on in our country. So the majority of people are saying, no, we don't want this. And a lot of con maybe Congress is for it. I don't know. I haven't looked at that part, so that's on me. But most people I've heard from do not like this. And then we have these crises that are happening on our own soil, and you only want to do the bare minimum. Like it, let, let's say, like like we're saying, like people can focus on two things at once. Can't you? Focus, the government should be able to focus on two things at once. They're able to do that for anything else. But when it comes to actually spending money on its own people, suddenly, ah, oh, it's not in the budget. Well, a couple trillion was sent to such and such, and that was in the budget. Right. Now all of a sudden, when people lose their homes and livelihoods and die in our own country, our own country then all of a sudden, there's I don't know what to do. Like like you're the president of the United States, but you can. Sorry, oh, I didn't mean to. Not a habit. What did you do? I had something in my teeth. Oh, I didn't <laughs> see it. Oh, nothing happened. Right. Yeah, so, anyhow. Yeah. <laughs> right. Really. Um, nah, yeah, now, all yeah. of a sudden, it's a big deal. Well, the Ukraine thing's a big deal. But the stuff in our soil, that's not a big deal. Like, so, yeah, I, I hate politics with a passion. I do, too. I don't keep up with them. You definitely, like, keep up with them more than me. I've been pulling back because it pisses me off. But unfortunately, I, um, I I do think that things are turning for the worse. Yeah. As someone who doesn't keep up with anything, like, you know, I feel like anyone could be like, well, actually this and well, actually that. If you know more than me, then you know what? You know more than me. I, I can't really argue with that. That's, um, you know... It's 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 there's no right answer. Yeah. But they're certainly doing the wrong things right now. That's yeah. the main thing to take. Yeah, right away now from stuff I mean, like that. we can we can clearly mm -hmm. I can say without a doubt in my mind that no one's happy about the things that are going on in society yeah. currently. I mean, you can regardless of what like side a you're general, on. General like, you know, unhappiness with like everyone. And I don't know mm. if it's always been that way because I've only been here for twenty four years. So I can't say it's always been like that, but yeah. you know, I definitely feel like unhappiness is just like the average, yeah. un unsatisfied, uncontempt. And that's the problem with like you know having like you no know. one just happy right now. I mean, you always have like you know the dedicated people that are like you know I'm a diehard American or mm -hmm. whatever. But you know it's like I don't know, man. I, even then, I feel like they fucking hate everything mm -hmm. going on because they hate all the inclusiveness which you know i think even people that are on the side of inclusiveness they always get tied to that stuff too they're like well you know you're not representing us the way we want to be represented mm -hmm. anyway you're only representing us because you spoke up about it or because uh you're trying to like you know give this empty representation that doesn't actually level the playing yeah one of those uh participation awards type of literally, thing literally you know yeah. rather than actual systematic reform which is all we could really ask for but like i said if we we could be here all night talking about that yeah and stuff i like mean that. It, uh, it runs deep with it does. the, the issues are in hole. The, i think the biggest issue or one of the biggest issues but one of the primary things that if obviously there's no way we can fix it but what um i read i don't know if you already read the book animal farm I did, yeah. You did. So one of the uh, one of the uh, one of the biggest things that actually stuck with me is the idea of the the chickens, because with the chickens they have such l short lifespans. Mm. So throughout their so the pigs, you know, they're the top dogs. They're just spouting out this basically fake news type of propaganda, and they'll say so the the original chickens they knew what was true. Their memories weren't the best, but they at least were experiencing the hardships at that time. They go through their lifespans, they die. Their offspring come up. They know a little bit of the truth, and then they get older and they die. And then slow, and then, you know, it keeps going over generation, generation, generation. Probably like five generations down the line, the pigs are still alive. In this case, the pigs are the government, right? right? Obviously. So yeah. the government still has a kind of set idea. The people have their lives that they're living, and they're only they're exposed to what they're exposed to. And, of course, the narrative that the pigs are showing, or the government's showing, just slightly changes, slightly more and more and more, changing the history, changing the truth of what's, you know, what's actually going on, to the point where the history is entirely flipped on its head. Somebody that used to be shown as a hero is now shown as a villain. And who knows the truth but the government. But the government's not going to tell you what the truth is. And the people that, you know, didn't experience that and was part of that, they're all gone now. So who's to say what's real, what's fake? And it's like, it's just like the saying that uh, history is written by the victors. Well, in this case, 
the victor is always the government because they're the ones in charge. Hey. So we always lose because we're dying. We, we have only have the, a short uh, lifespan. The eighty-year-old some... Congress exactly. people and stuff like and, that. Yeah, then you have the eighty-year-old Congress people that stay in. They, how, like, how are you ninety, and, and still trying to run? Laws that affect us currently. Yeah, you're gonna be gone, and how? Like, in like probably two days from now. <laughs> like this affects you zero percent. Mm-hmm. Like you want me to believe that you you care so deeply about our country, or at the bare minimum, you would at least care about your grandchildren. After you, like most politicians are corrupt, I will say, and most people Heartless. believe that. Yes. And with us knowing that, you expect us to believe that you care about the country or even your own grandchildren to the point where any decision you're making is not going to only bef- uh, benefit you. you. You really expect us to believe that. And that's like there's. Oh, man. That's, yeah, that's I said, you could be here all night talking about it. I really yeah. could. But um.